I was living in Lima, Peru several years ago when I got interested in book piracy. Books are big business in Peru, and the fake book industry is actually bigger than the legitimate book industry. For a writer, being pirated is like getting on the bestseller list. One day, I visited an area of Lima known as La Parada. I was there to meet an old man who made books by hand from discarded paper and cardboard. His workshop smelled powerfully of glue and resin. Whenever I strayed toward the door for fresh air, he would warn me about thieves. He wasn't wrong to worry. It's no exaggeration to say La Parada is one of the bleakest neighborhoods I've ever visited. There was something comforting about finding book culture here, and not just in his shop. Right outside his door on the sidewalk, a woman had laid out a display of cheaply printed books on a rotting wooden door balanced on cinder blocks. One of them stood out. It's called Speeches and Toasts. Keys to speaking in public, it says on the cover. Speeches for every occasion. Its bright, colorful optimism couldn't have felt more out of place considering where we were standing. You don't see a lot of this in La Parada. Or this. So I bought it, and years later, it's still one of my favorite books. I mean, who isn't afraid of public speaking? Here in these pages, I found, for example, this. Discurso por el fin de una carrera política. Speech for the end of a political career. Today, I'm not here to capture votes. Instead, I'm here to give you my own vote of gratitude. Or this. Discurso de un huérfano en el día del padre. Speech by an orphan on Father's Day. Because it was a father who cared in their infancy for the geniuses who transformed the world and whose triumphs have been registered by history, would we have all the wonders of the world without these men? It is hardly hyperbole to say that Father's Day is the most important holiday on the calendar. Or this, discurso de homenaje de un niño a visita de autoridades de educación, a speech a student might give on the occasion of a visit by local education officials. It is an honor for this village and an inspiration to its children to receive two esteemed educators who work for the intellectual growth of the province of blank within whose jurisdiction lies this village which has placed its hopes in you because this year you are entrusted with the sacred mission of teaching. Long live instruction. Long live the fatherland. I love the Baroque specificity of it. I love the grammatical tight ropes, the grandiosity of every emotion. It's all oddly moving. Because I've seen people give speeches like this. Some of them have been my family members. The cover might not show it, but this book is very Peruvian. There are wedding toasts, sure, toasts to give at a bachelor party or on your mother's birthday, but you can find that in any book of the genre from any country. Tell me where else you could find Palabras de Elogio a un Pescador Fallecido, a sample text for the eulogy of a drowned fisherman. We'll no longer find Juan sitting on the shore. We'll no longer hear him tell stories of fishermen. He'll never throw a line into the water again. And though his fishing nets are empty today, our eyes are filled with tears. Or this helpful speech. Palabras de un miembro institucional en la inauguración de un radio receptor. Words offered by a member of an institution on the occasion of the inauguration of a radio receiver. These modern times have arrived to offer us this receiving machine now installed in the social hall of this club, from where it will not only capture information from all over the world, but offer the same back to the people so that they may participate in the news that travels atop the ethereal waves directly to our ears all those events taking place throughout this diverse and fractured globe where we earthlings reside. It's one of dozens of speeches inaugurating things. There's also a tribute by a grateful youth to a gentleman benefactor, a speech in a theater introducing a comedic group, conveniently a response to a speech in a theater introducing a comedic group. It goes on and on. From time to time, when I'm feeling nostalgic for our peculiar, exaggerated speech patterns, I'll crack this book open and feel like I'm home again. It's not poetry, not exactly, but it's not not poetry, you know? The more I've thought about it, the more I've come to realize this is much more than an overwritten little self-help book. See, Peru is a country defined and divided by language. There are 15 different families of languages. The most widely spoken indigenous language, Quechua, is a native tongue for 5 million or so Peruvians. In fact, it's been an official language since 1975, but in the real world, that doesn't mean much. In Peru, there's only one language that matters, one language that means progress and possibility and access and money. Spanish. In Peru, how you talk matters almost as much as how you look. 
that's what this book is really about. It's about the cultural, linguistic, and ethnic divide between the Andean and the Creole worlds, between the mountains and the coast, between the poor and the rich. For many Peruvians, particularly those of indigenous descent, being in command of formal Spanish means the possibility of getting ahead. And that's what everyone wants, right? So you have books like this one, in a place like La Parada. When you look at this book, you aren't looking at some funny little artifact. What you're actually seeing is something else. It's an attempt at healing a national wound. There's no speech addressing this. There's no soothing discourse on the bifurcated identity of a country fractured by its own complicated and troubling history. There's no tribute to the possibility of creating a whole from disparate, often warring cultural tribes that constitute, for now, a purely imaginary nation. There's no homage to the quixotic 200-year-old attempt to hide the fault lines intrinsic to this national project from our very first, very flawed moment. None of those speeches are in this magical little book. I know, because I looked. <laughs>